All right, you guys, so I spoke with a professor who was a fellow, and she was impressed by my being a vegan and when I competed in bodybuilding. Her study was on muscle dysmorphia in bodybuilders, and it was high, like 50 to 70 percent have an eating disorder in body image. I actually showed her my YouTube video, Surreal Shreddedness, and she couldn't believe that I did that as a, uh, on a vegan diet. And uh, she was just, I gave her my card, so you never know. Maybe she'll use me as like a case reporter, bring me in for editorial work. So essentially, she told me that, uh, that I did it the healthy way. All right, you guys, so this is the poster hall. And then we have the exhibit hall over here. I just want to take you guys inside so you can see what I see while I'm on this... Uh, while I'm here at this conference. So obviously you have a bunch of exhibitors, lots of, you know, salesmanship, products, uh, you know, and also not just products, but, you know, devices and those kinds of things, you know, medical. Um, I mean, you have the, there was a, a, cancer, a cancer institute here. Um, all these different biomechanics, machines, uh, VO2 max testing. Here's the in-body, which is what we have. Now you've seen me make videos on that. And uh, you know, then you have your literature there. There's one of the sponsors, the Gatorade Sports Science Institute. I'll take continuing education from them sometimes. And uh, oh, and then you have the bod pod. Wow, that's interesting. All right, you guys, so here's an abstract poster here. Beetroot juice lowers oxygen cost of vigorous intensity exercise in trained endurance athletes. And you guys have seen my videos where I'll have um, beet juice for, you know, um, when I'm on the ride cycling. But here, so you'll see mainly the significant differences right here. So the oxygen consumption is significantly less compared to placebo for the same workload. Nitrates, concentrated in green leafy vegetables and beets, underwent a great makeover a few years ago from inert substances to having profound effects on the power plants within all of our cells, reducing the oxygen cost during exercise, meaning we can bust out the same amount of work with less oxygen. So one little shot of beet juice allows free divers to hold their breath for over four minutes. They get about a half minute longer. And for others, this improved muscle efficiency allows athletes to exercise at a higher power output or running speed for the same amount of breath. I profiled this discovery in an unprecedented 17-part video series, the longest I think I've ever done. It's just so fascinating. First, a quick biochemistry breather. Our body uses oxygen to create ATP, the energy currency of our bodies. Every time we think, every time we blink, every time we flex a muscle, we use up ATP, which has to be replenished by breathing more oxygen, or we die. The enzyme that makes ATP, ATP synthase, deep inside our cells, is literally a microscopic rotary mechanical motor. Oxygen causes the flow of protons, and like a water wheel in that flow, the enzyme turns and makes ATP. Like any motor, it's not perfectly efficient. There's some slippage of the gears, there's proton leakage out the edges, but it's an extraordinary mechanism. OK, so where do beets come in? Well, beets offer one of the most concentrated sources of dietary nitrate. Our tongue bacteria take these nitrates and convert them into nitrites, which are then re-swallowed, absorbed again, and then make their way to our cells, and then converted into a third compound, nitric oxide, which then acts on the proton pump to either reduce the slippage or plug up the leaks, or even take the place of oxygen in the whole contraption. We're still not sure, but this is why they think beets are able to reduce the oxygen cost of exercise while improving 
athletic performance. And so there, there's the conclusions right there. So there you have it. I'm Jeanette from Michigan State University. It's a pleasure to meet you. You too. So we were just discussing, this is your, uh, your research study, correct? Yes, it is. And we were looking at the uh, micronutrient intake in youth as well as physical activity level and how that impacts cardiovascular uh, risk factor profile, correct? Yes. And so what was the main uh, conclusions? So our main conclusion was that the high active youth did have uh, lower cardiovascular disease risk factors, including mm -hmm. lower percent body fat and higher high density lipoprotein cholesterol, which is what we'd expect to see. Mm -hmm. But our novel finding was that these higher active youth did have higher uh, intakes of several cardioprotective micronutrients, such as our antioxidants, as well as potassium and magnesium. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, we'd like to look at the relationship and the interaction between the cardiovascular disease risk factor status and the micronutrient intakes. With the other micronutrients, is it could be indicative of higher fruit and vegetable consumption in the group that was higher fit, right? Yes. Which is what we discussed, because that's what we're classifying the micronutrient profile as basically an indirect indicator of fruit and veggie consumption. Yep, exactly. Thank you.